Day 23 of 25 Drinks Christmas is upon us, and if you live in the Midwest like me, you are currently snowed inside. It is a winter wonderland outside, and for the first time in what feels like a while, we're having a proper snowy white Christmas, which is kind of refreshing. And it's put me in the mood to go ahead and make a holiday classic that is a little bit polarizing, eggnog. Boozy eggnog, single serving, for 25 Drinks Christmas Day 23. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today we're making a single serving eggnog that you can make at home just with a cocktail shaker. No fancy cooking, no fancy folding egg white into stuff, you don't even need to do any of that. We're gonna take uh, a page from old school bartending handbooks and make one using our cocktail shaker. Now you're going to need everything that you see in front of you, that's going to include some bourbon, uh, brandy or cognac, um, Amaretto, uh, simple syrup. I'm substituting for honey syrup here, but you can just stick with regular simple if it's what you have. Uh, some milk, whole milk specifically. You want uh, the most fat content that you can get. And then one whole egg. Now there's something to be said about the whole raw egg and cocktails thing. And yeah, there is always a potential for foodborne illness when you ingest raw eggs, poultry, red meat, etc. However, think about the processes of modern pasteurization, food quality control schemes, and the invention of refrigeration, which means that food keeps for longer because bacteria has less of a chance to grow. And then if you furthermore live outside of the US where, other, where things like eggs are a significantly more well-controlled uh, industry, the chances of you getting foodborne illness of any kind are low and even lower when you consider how other nations like Japan take very careful care of how these things are produced. In general, it's not something to worry about. It's an understandable concern, but I think really it's not going to be a huge issue, especially because we're going to be emulsifying everything, which does, in theory, at least lower the chance of foodborne illness. Raw egg aside, let's go ahead and just get started because I am I am a mite thirsty and uh, I'm ready for some eggnog. <laughs> we're gonna start off with um, our liquor base. It's going to be one and a half ounces of a bourbon, a sweet bourbon would be ideal here, but I'm gonna go for this Ed Williams bottle of Bond, just because it's what I have on hand. Next up, we're going to do uh, a full ounce of bourbon. My uh, my proportions are coming from the recipe listed in the most recent episode, at least at this time, uh, of uh, How to Drink, where he went over a bunch of, Greg from How to Drink goes over a bunch of eggnogs, uh, and his preferred one has a two and a half ounce total, you know, base spirit uh, measurement. I'm just shifting it in favor of what is closer to a 50-50 split. Next up, we're gonna do uh, half an ounce of amaretto, and then we're gonna do half an ounce of honey syrup. Now I'm saying half an ounce, I'm going to pour myself a full ounce here, because this is a very thin honey syrup and it doesn't pack a lot of sweetness per ounce, uh, so, so, or rather per half ounce. Um, but stick with half an ounce of whatever simple syrup or syrup sweetener you're gonna be using. Next we need an ounce and a half of our whole milk. And finally, well, almost, we're gonna go ahead and put in our whole egg. It really does feel wrong putting putting a whole egg in a cocktail. There is something a little a little shady about it, but I know I know that's just how it's done. So now, uh, as sort of like a, an additional flavoring component, I'm going to throw uh, some ground nutmeg and some ground. Where's my, where's my ground cinnamon? What? Found it, I put it in the spice cap by accident. Uh, nutmeg and cinnamon to taste. I'm gonna go, personally, uh, maybe a teaspoon of nutmeg and then a couple teaspoons worth of cinnamon. I'm gonna throw my cocktail strainer spring in there, cap this up and give this a dry shake to emulsify the egg into the rest of the fluids. Okay, <laughs> probably shook it harder than I needed to. Ooh, that smells good. <laughs> Once our dry shake is complete, I'm gonna go ahead and pull our strainer out and then set that aside. While we add our ice cubes to shake, we're gonna do the usual one crack, one hole. Once we've gotten that all tossed in there, I'm gonna give this a quick like to clean it off and make sure nothing is going to leak out of it, which might happen anyway, but oh well. 
this sealed up, and then we're gonna shake it for 12 to 15 seconds. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and serve this in a double rocks glass. Uh, with some ice. Could you do cracked? Yeah, could you do a whole cube? Yeah. I think because we've chilled this one, it's safe to say a whole cube is probably the ideal way to go. Pour this over, just like so. And I'm going to finish this with a garnish of a whole cinnamon stick. This is the wrong one, this one's not open. A whole cinnamon stick inside, just like that. Oh, it kind of sunk in, but there's a cinnamon stick in there, I promise. Good God, I'm a mess. That, ladies and gentlemen, is our holiday eggnog. Let's go ahead and give it a sip. Yeah. Oh man, that's, oh, that's so much better than store-bought eggnog. So with store-bought eggnog, there's this kind of attempted approximation of like a baking spice note and you get something similar to that here, but the difference is it's actual baking spices, actual nutmeg and cinnamon and notes of vanilla and almond and these, these nice, just sweet notes. They're actually real here. They're actually happening. The approximation of things like Southern Comfort eggnog that attempt to accomplish the same thing just don't succeed because how could they? They don't actually include any of those ingredients. It's very smooth. Actually kind of light because we've shaken it up so much to emulsify the egg that it, it's kind of put some air into it and created a little bit of a foam around the top here. It might not be super easy to see, but it's good. It's got the notes of both the brandy and the bourbon coming through pretty loud, but not in uh, an unapproachable way. Yeah, it's like brand, uh, brandy, vanilla, and oak flavors, and then some some roast peanuts, which I get primarily on, on this bourbon in particular. It's really nice. And it, it, it's not super heavy like a lot of store-bought eggnogs are. It's a lot more casually enjoyable. I feel like this isn't going to give me a stomach ache uh, an hour from now because it's just pure fucking lactose. This feels like it's meant to be drank, whereas some of the store-bought alternatives feel super synthetic and like not the way to go. It's really good. I will say um, my honey syrup here, I, I'm i sure it's doing something, but immediately I'm not getting what it is. Yeah, I can't really pick out the honey or a honey-like impact anywhere in this. Um, and I think because this honey syrup is so thin, like it really is thin, I, I didn't do this, this one quite right. Um, it's not lending a ton of sweetness either. Um, so I would definitely use at least a two to one honey syrup, which will be thicker. Uh, you could see it will provide more flavor and it will um, produce a stronger impact on the drink and its sweetness, or just a regular two to one simple syrup. Either way, you'd be getting a much more refined, sort of cohesive taste compared to this, which feels a little bit like you can, you can kind of constantly pick um, everything out left and right. It all it all feels like it's it's there, but maybe not quite as rolling and complex as it could be. It is good though. And honestly, um, I feel like um, a good addition to this actually would be like half an ounce of a coffee liqueur. Something about the the baking spice, the honey, the brandy, the, the bourbon, the amaretto. It's making me wish that there was just a, a slight coffee flavor to this. Maybe a coffee syrup would be advisable here because you would get the sweetness uh, of like the sugar component, but also coffee flavor. And for those of you who don't know, it's like a Rhode Island thing. Coffee syrup is a thing and you can just make it yourself by substituting the water in a simple syrup for coffee. But yeah, that that's, that's, that's eggnog. It's really that simple. Um, and once you get over the idea of making the raw egg, you are off to the races, man. This stuff is great and whether or not you like eggnog, it's a holiday thing. And I think without, you know, a Christmas without eggnog is, it's like a Halloween without candy. Whether or not you eat candy or even like the stuff you get in your bag, it's around to stay. And I'm glad we had an opportunity to do it before the series ended.
Well, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas where we made some homemade eggnog that will knock your socks off. Um, one last final note, you could probably substitute uh, milk for heavy cream if you wanted something a lot thicker with a little bit more um, sort of creamy sweetness to it and like a smoother mouthfeel. This is kind of thin, thinner than I might like it. I mean, maybe you could substitute like half an ounce of whole milk and then a whole ounce of heavy cream, something like that. But whatever you do, it's gonna come out great. And if you enjoyed this video and made this at home, tell me how it went in the comments. I wanna know what, you know, maybe you've got your own spec for an eggnog. I'd love to hear it. Uh, otherwise, click that subscribe button and like down below. Catch the next episode tomorrow, day 24 of 25 Drinks Christmas. But for now, I will bid you adieu. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Goodbye.